Welcome back to the most average Phantom Forces guides on YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about something that most people probably don't really care about, which is sometimes you can't afford a sniper rifle, so you get the tried and true snipers that we have at home. The following weapons are a selection of non-sniper sniper rifle alternatives. Starting off first is the Mark 11 with the 500 Phantom conversion. The Mark 11 has cemented itself in a lot of players' hearts by being a reliable DMR in its own right. However, it can become a makeshift sniper rifle in a pinch. Fitting it with the Fat Mamma Jamma 500 Phantom, you get a solid 100.1 torso and 200 headshot damage until 65 studs where it drops to 67.21 and 141 after 210. I'm pretty sure the 500 Phantom had its namesake purely because if you get hit by it, you'll end up roaming the halls of some random mansion in complete Victorian era garb. I don't know if ghosts have like a default kit or something, but it's never a ghost in some hallway screaming, IT'S BRITTANY BITCH! in a halter top and Ugg boots. With a pretty low muzzle velocity of 1,000 studs and a fire rate of 275, the only thing slower than this weapon is Taylor Swift fans. Uh, um, sorry, I meant cult members. Up next is the Doomslayer's favorite double pipe orphan, I mean, demon wrecker, the Stevens DB. In its default state, it's really only useful for putting holes in home intruders trying to steal your 32-inch Walmart TV. However, when equipped with slugs, it becomes fantastic at bringing down elephants, aka the 2020 Dutch Minister of Health. Dealing a 123.75 torso damage and 237.6 headshot under 37.5 studs, and dropping to 51.8 and 99.456 after 165, which doesn't necessarily sound impressive, but the Stevens has an instant burst feature that fires both tubes at the same time meaning this can one-tap anyone at any range. I'm not going to be including the other shotguns with slug conversions like the KS-23 because of its inability to one-tap at longer ranges to the torso. The Stevens can reliably one-tap anyone and feels like Da Vinci's death ray anytime it's pointed at someone. Following that is actually another shotgun, and once again, the Russians are getting frisky. The Sega 12 with 50 BMG conversion. Dealing a massive 300 torso and 500 headshot under 45 studs and only slightly falling to 283.65 and 472.75 headshot after 180, this is actually one of the very few high caliber weapons that one taps to any body part, including limbs, dealing a base 100 damage to anywhere under 45 studs. The long awaited answer to would 50 BMG fire out of a 12 gauge is finally answered. And the answer is yes after a barrel swap, heavier bolt, stronger tolerances, and a hurt shoulder, but you know, it, it still fires. Flying in next is the weapon that fires the most expensive round in the game, the Gyrojet Carbine. Made for killing space commies, this poor weapon never saw any service due to the Soviet Union not only collapsing, but never making any real contribution to the human space race anyway. The Gyrojet doesn't have any form of decent damage at close range, however, it increases in damage the farther it flies, due to its rocket-based propellant. Starting with 60 torso damage and 105 headshot under 25 studs, where it increases to 100 and 175 after 150, it is actually an incredibly reliable weapon when it comes to long-range shots. It's quiet, low recoil, and despite its ballistic drop, it's actually pretty easy to use because of the ability to get quick follow-up shots. Plus, it has the added benefit of needing skill because it has no ballistic tracker meaning you can't sit there and ask Siri to do your job for you. The final weapon is a fan favorite and has a special place in my heart, the SAS 308. Before you complain, this is a sniper! It's not, it's a pistol. I don't know why this exists, but I'm so glad it does because it's so, so fun. Chambered in 308 Winchester and firing at 3,000 studs per second, it offers very little drop and great bullet speed. Almost failing its edging streak at 99.75 torso and 225 headshot under 30 studs and slightly dropping to 93.1 and 210 after 145, it doesn't always one-tap to the torso, but quite frequently enough, it hits hard enough to end someone who even just took some fall damage. And with its great muzzle velocity, it makes it easy to hit headshots anyway. Getting 1500 stud shots is actually fairly easy with this, making it speedy and very accurate to play with. Anyway, that sums up my favorite sniper alternatives. Please let me know if you agree or disagree. Seriously, positive and negative comments both boost my engagement, so go for it. Thank you for making it this far. Stay tuned for streams and more videos. Until then, see ya.